think Connor's got the natural power. I think he's naturally the faster fighter. I think he's a smarter fighter as well. If the first round ends and they're both still breathing, okay, Poirier's winning. That's it for me. Why is he back? He's back for one reason, not for money. Not even for the belt, because he's won it before. He's back for legacy. He's back to prove that he's one of the greatest of all time. That's what's got me intrigued about this fight. It's like turning up the court in a tracksuit. You're just asking for it, aren't you? <laughs> or turning up to BT in a tracksuit and flip flops. <laughs> no offence, <laughs> no offence, Darren. I don't want any Throwing trouble. Shot at me already. <laughs> I don't want any trouble. Do you know what I mean? Welcome to Poirier versus McGregor three, the debate here on BT Sport. I'm Adam Catterall. It's a pleasure once again to be in your company. So how does the trilogy go down? I've got together a right bunch of reprobates to discuss this main event coming to you from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. The commissioner from BT Sport joins us, the one and only Mr. Nick Pete, a man that is used to applying his trade inside the octagon and selling various products on his Instagram page. And he's also got the best set of teeth from Merseyside, <laughs> UFC middleweight Darren Till joins us as well. <laughs> A fella that has done incredibly well on YouTube in the world of podcasting. He's an entrepreneur. He's also more northern than me. True Geordie comes and joins us for a little bit of a chat as well. And we've got to have a little bit of sensible as well when we're talking about mixed martial arts. So we've got the biggest brain, the best brain, the analyst himself. He's here, right here. The King Riptile. Mr. Dan Hardy. How good are you, sir? You. you good? Good to see you, mate. Good yeah. to see you. Looking smart as well. That's what we like to see. Uh, boys, what I, want, what I want to get first and foremost is a feeling for the event because I've got a few things lined up for you. We're going to get a little bit of shadow boxing later on, maybe, between you two, get you involved. That's a bit of news to you, but you know what I mean? I'll throw that down <laughs> later on. Uh, we're also going to look through that second fight just to see if we missed a few things because we were cage side for that. And I personally haven't watched it back on screen, so we'll get some of the different camera angles. But I want to get a little bit of a feel for how you're feeling coming into this event. Uh, at UFC 264. Brian, I'll start with you first and foremost, mate. As a, as a major fan of the UFC, as a person that is conversing constantly on all different platforms with fans, when this fight was made, what was your initial thoughts about it? For me, it's about, is Conor McGregor who he says he is? John Kavanaugh told us before the last fight, this is the best Conor McGregor you've ever seen, and it was without doubt the worst Conor McGregor we've ever seen. So if you want us to keep buying tickets and you want us to keep believing the hype and that this is the best fighter in the UFC and all the things that he tells us, you could kind of make an excuse for the Diaz loss. You can make an excuse for Khabib because he's such a good fighter. But once you start racking up more losses than wins in the last five years, that's bullshit. So this is about him proving what he says. Fair point. Regarding Dustin Poirier coming into this fight, as a fighter, right? Dustin was offered a, a title fight earlier on this year against uh, Charles Oliveira, but obviously the, the dawn of the, of the trilogy with Connor, he's chosen that. What would you have done in that situation? Would you have gone for the trilogy or would he have gone for the title I'd fight? I would have done the same thing, the trilogy, yeah. I think he's, he's thought about the money aspect first, because I think Poirier is only getting better. He's not, it's not like he's coming off the pedal, he's only getting better with age, so he's thought, I'll get me money and then I'll go and get the title, because the money's not always going to be there mm. for the fight. So I'd have done the exact same thing. What does that say about Connor's star still in the UFC, if he's still the money in this division? Well, he's one of the biggest pay-per-view stars in all of sports, and remains so, even though he's had, what, one win in the last five years? That just says, it's testament to who Conor McGregor is as a superstar. Um, but with him, you know, both, these, both right, exactly right. Dustin's going to take this opportunity because it's right there in front of him, the biggest paycheck in the sport. And by the way, Charles will be ringside with the belt waiting for the winner anyway. And connor has got nowhere else to go. If he doesn't beat Dustin, if he doesn't win this trilogy fight, where does he go from there? With all due respect, he's fighting YouTubers. Mm. I understand the money aspect of this, Dan, right? But as a mixed martial artist, as a person that likes to analyse people's styles and what have you, matchup-wise, is it the right thing to be doing for both of these guys at this time? I think so, certainly for Poirier, because McGregor's going to continue to improve, especially once he's got something that's really irked him. And you've got to think, the low kicks were a big part of that last fight. You're going to either see a good counter for low kicks or good low kicks himself from Connor because he's going to play that game. So I think the more Poirier leaves time in between, the more chance Connor's got of, it, of improving and coming in with a calm state of mind. I, genuinely, I think Connor's the better all round martial artist, but I think the last time he stepped in there, he was so focused on one game plan that he made it very easy for Poirier to, to settle into his game. I, I think this next version will be the best of both of them without a doubt. Do you mind if I borrow your uh, ride-along idea now? Absolutely Because not. I want us to go through this with your mind alongside and obviously get Darren's take in this as well. And us as fans, I'm going to play the second fight that happened earlier on this year at, uh, at Fight Island. Just 
for my own benefit, really, because I was cage side and I saw it first hand, but I've never watched it back on the screen. I'd love to get your takes on maybe things that we saw in the first round, maybe that we missed in that second round, and how that fight kind of flipped. So I want to get your real-time reactions to the fight. Sure. All right, boys. Darren, I just want to get your thoughts on this, right? You fought on Fight Island yeah. behind closed doors. And now, there were, there were a few fans in there. I think there were about 1,500, 2,000 for this event, weren't there? But he's used to coming out, T-Mobile Arena, 20,000 packed out. You've been at the Echo, mate, when everybody's been singing Sweet Caroline and all that type of carry-on. Talk, talk me through coming out in a, I don't want to say dead arena because there was fans, but in, a, in, a, in, a, in an arena like that. I liked it better, me. Did you? I, yeah, I did. I don't know why. I just felt like the, I felt, even though, I don't, I don't want to say I liked it better, but I just felt like it was just get in and fight. Whereas when there's fans and everything, the minute, even when your bus pulls up to like the arena, you can just hear thudding and that, and it can like, it can mess with you a little bit. I gotta, gotta go out there and fight it. So I like just get, because basically because of, it was, you know, the fight was during lockdown. It was basically just get to the arena, fight and go away. There was no, I liked it, mate. It was quick and easy. I really enjoyed it. Mm. Was it like, I mean, obviously you worked on it as well, Dan, being there as well. It, it is a weird situation to fight in them environments, and obviously you've been a fight yourself. You, yeah. you, you, you used to feeding off that energy, and Connor comes across as the type of fella that feeds off the energy of the people that are in the arena. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think so. And I think, you know, there were people in the arena, but Connor, Connor likes that raucous atmosphere. He, you know, he loves to be the centre of attention. That's really what Connor McGregor Fight Week's about. I mean, no one garners the amount of interest that McGregor does. So to have that atmosphere in there, it only feeds him. And to be honest, I think he came in here to just, just get the job done. I mean, you'll see in this first 30 seconds how he, he constantly chases that counter. Weird false start here as well, <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to point it out. He's right in the middle when, he, when the fight starts. Straight into that counter, the counter left over the top. He's really trying to get for Look how eager Connor is. It heavy, so of, heavy on the It reminds me of Jose Aldo against Connor. Yeah. He couldn't get at him quick enough. I'm like, what are you doing? Slow down. He's just, I mean, he's, he's just shown his A game plan straight away because he's hanging heavy on that lead leg and he's trying to counter. And what you'll see is Poirier sinking away and start cuffing him with that mm. right hook as he's missing as well. Brian, did you, you did a, a live watch along for this, did you? Yes, bro. So what was the atmosphere like in the room then as people are watching this and watching this, these first opening exchanges? I think, to be honest, the whole room was like, we all know Dustin Poirier is class, but you just buy into the McGregor hype, everything, everything about him is, I'm going to say what I'm going to do and then go and do it. So it was a case of, all right, at some point, he's going to land the big left hook and that's it, we all celebrate. But when, when Dustin got, started grappling and went chest to chest with him, I thought this is perfect game plan. You're going to get them arms tired. And what we the problem I think Connor has is, his, the blueprint to beat Connor is so out there and so obvious that everyone knows how to get there now. See, I think Poirier is just playing the game here. You know, all the way through this first round, you can tell clearly that his main focus is to move laterally and just stay away from that left hand. Mm. And because Connor wasn't doing anything else with his game, you know, you think back to the first fight, he came out with spinning kicks. You know, there was a lot of variety to his game. He was heavy on that lead foot and he was there for those kicks. I mean, it, Poirier landed 18 kicks on, on yeah. that lead leg in this fight. Could, could you tell early in this that... I mean, he, he is normally quite light on his feet in yeah. that karate style. Could you tell early doors that he maybe d concentrated too much on the boxing? Uh, absolutely. He's just, he's just hanging heavy on that lead leg because he's looking for that same shot he landed the first fight. stances as well. Connor's yeah. stance, it's so pinched together like a boxer. Yeah. You can see he had his mind on this Manny Pacquiao super fight down the line because just as a, as a whole approach, it's all about boxing. It's all about getting up close and landing that left hand. He doesn't seem to be setting it up. He's so overconfident. He's, he's not even doing what he would normally do. He's not laying the traps. He's just thinking, all I have to do is tag you once and it's all over. And he's actually like strolling towards Dustin as if he's nothing to worry about. And it's like, this isn't the Dustin Poirier from now. last time. This is the critical moment for me. I, sp I was lucky enough to speak to Matt, uh, Mike Brown this week, Dustin's coach. Um, and he talked about this exact moment. He said, when Dustin starts wobbling his head in there and starts rolling his shoulders, that moment where he points at Connor and lets, and he starts talking, he said, in the corner then we knew. We knew Dustin was going to win because he was in the flow state. It's suddenly it's mm. like, I've overcome the demon. You aren't going to knock me out. Boom, welcome to my world now. Let's play. Yeah. And that first low kick straight away in this second round. And Poirier, uh, Poirier had spotted this telling in Conor McGregor's game because once the left hand stops working, he starts firing that lead uppercut through. And you're going to see in a second, he's going to counter Conor as, as he throws that. And, and you can see as well, because the damage on the lead leg, it forces Connor to step onto that foot to regain his balance. And you kind of see the knee buckle a little mm. bit. 
I mean, this, like, Connor just looks flustered here, and, and Poirier looks like this is getting better and better as it goes on. He looks but, very un Connor like Yeah, he does. He does. We're going to see the exchange in a minute, but it's, it's like, Connor, you, here, here we go. You see how he buckles on that lead leg because Poirier catches him with that right hook as he's leaning. This was the most staggering thing about the fight for me was once Connor went from the, the hammer to the nail, he was over in about 10 seconds. Yeah. Like once he started taking the punishment, his ability to take punishment, I was surprised at how, how low that was compared to someone like Dustin, Justin Gaethje, any of the other top fighters at that level. He did, like, I think Dustin just planned his downfall so well he wasn't able to stand up. Yeah. You know, the, the thing is, we always see, whenever, whenever Connor is on the back foot, it's always because he's tired. Mm. You know? like, whenever we see him backed up against the fence, it's because Nate Diaz is pouring the pressure on or because Poirier's got him backed up. But if you go back to his, his UFC debut against Brimage, where he's actually choosing to fight off the back foot, that might be a good secondary option for him because he does better work when Poirier is moving forward. Mm. You know, he needs Poirier to commit to stuff so he can counter that, so he can start walking him onto things. But you think those uppercuts that he was using against Marcus Brimage and how square Poirier stands when he's in close throwing bombs, I think that might be an option for him. If he's on the back foot as well, I mean, correct us if I'm wrong, but it means he's less likely to take damage on the, the leg as well, the for lead sure. leg. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely something in being planted on that lead leg when you're taking those kicks that makes yeah. a difference. Because if you attack that from another position when the weight's not on it, it's not quite as impactful. But when someone's planted heavy on that lead leg and all their weight's into that, mm -hmm. it, it seems to be far more impactful on the tibial nerve when people get caught on it. Just, just a quick one on the, on the mentality of Dustin Poirier. And I'm going to come to you on this one, Dylan, because we had obviously had a conversation at Madison Square Garden in the aftermath of you coming back off after what happened at UFC London. He will have gone into this fight with all sorts of things running around his head. The night before, he'd have been thinking, right, this guy's done me at 145 pounds. Yes, fair enough, it's six, seven years ago, what have you. But all those demons would have been there. For him to come through it, to obviously then get the victory, talk me through the mental process of, one, the demons at the start of the fight, and then pff, the relief of when you actually get the job done. I just... I think when you're a fighter, you just... You know what you're expecting, but then when, when it's there in front of you, like when, when, I'm, when I was sat there in MSG, I think you sort of, more than anything, you just feel regret. You're like, why have I, why have I chose to do this? Like, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> and I can imagine Dustin was probably thinking the same thing. Well, I'm back here again fighting the guy who KO'd me the first time. I can imagine he had some sick demons going through his head. And then when it's done, it's like, wow, he hit me with the left hand and I was, was, I was right? still standing. But I think the only thing I can touch on with Connor, what I truly seen was I just don't think he was sharp enough. I just don't think he got the right training. I don't think he was in the gutter. I think he was out in Abu Dhabi or Dubai, yeah, Dubai yeah, yeah, yeah. sipping wasn't pineapple he in Portugal juice. Portugal or somewhere like yeah, that. Yeah, wherever he was. All, yeah, he wasn't in Ireland anyway on the great streets, wasn't, wasn't he? He wasn't in the gutter like he when he was with, when he first started. And I know obviously you get money and things change, but I think you need to keep that gutter mentality. Like he was sipping pineapple juice and then going on his bike along the. Uh, uh, I don't know, I just, that's just not the way I think it needs to be done. I think for fights like that, you can imagine Dustin was training in the gutter and feeling like he was in the gutter. I think, I just don't think Connor got the, ra the rounds of spar and the rounds of pads, yeah. everything. And he just looked very, his left hand was just very, just very, it just stayed there. It wasn't sharp, like it had that crack and come back. I just don't think he's had the pad work or the spar. And that's for that fight. And, I don't know if he's changed it for this fight, because if you go on his, I know Instagram's not real, but if you go on his Instagram, he's still in Dubai, sip, sipping pineapple juices and that, so who knows? He got a boxing coach, didn't he? His old yeah. Crumlin boxing coach, and he was raving, oh, you're going to see a new Connor. Well, we've seen a new Connor, like, you weren't wrong. He looked like shit, to be honest, like. I'm never going to doubt him, obviously, because he's Connor. Like, people, people love to, a guy gets a loss or two, and they're like, oh, he's shit. and then you think, wow, yeah, he, he beats everyone. He's like one of, you know, but... I think that's, that, isn't that the million dollar question going into yeah. this third fight though? The fact remains that will we ever see Connor from Connor Dustin one? Does that guy even live, remain? Is he, is he still you know, living and breathing? Because this is a guy that does sleep on super yachts and he does live a, a billionaire style lifestyle. Maybe that is why he took them shots and he, and he was affected so badly by those shots mm. because there is no one there driving the road work. There is no one there at six in the morning making sure he puts the work in because Connor's the boss. I don't care who's in the corner. Conor McGregor is the boss of Conor McGregor World. He is the CEO of Conor McGregor Enterprises. And that's just the way it is. And whether it takes a special kind of athlete to be able to put all that to one side and get the hunger back of being on the dole in Crumlin and be that type of 
trainer, that type of worker once again. I don't know whether he's got that in him again. And that's why, for me, if he is able to get a victory on Saturday night, if he is able to beat Dustin Poirier, for me, that puts him right up there with some of the greatest of all time. You've gone big. I like it, man. Well, hold your horses, because we're going to talk about what changes and what you expect from fight week uh, when it all gets underway. We're also going to have a little bit of a shadow off here, just because I've got you two in the octagon, so we might as well have a bit of a scrap whilst we're here, eh, lads? <laughs> what what is it? Featherweight versus light heavyweight? Nice. Isn't that right? <laughs> <Is it? laughs> The sound, the sound. I wish I was. And then we're hopefully going to take our splinters out of backside and make some wild predictions uh, by the end of the show as well as to how we think this main event's going to go down. So make sure you stick with us for Poirier, McGregor 3, The Debate on BT Sport. Welcome back to Poirier, McGregor 3, The Debate on BT Sport. Time to get stuck into what we want to see from Fight Week. Right, come on. Right, at the start of the show, you talked about McGregor and what you expected and what you wanted from him the last time when we were on Fight Island. It was a little bit more reserved. He was very respectful in the build-up and all that type of stuff. What do you want to see this week? Well, don't turn up on a yacht would be a, <laughs> would be a start. Like, you know, uh, it's like turning up the court in a tracksuit. You're just asking for it, aren't you? Or turn up to BT in a tracksuit and flip flops. <laughs> no offence, son. No offence, Darren. I don't want any no trouble. shot at me already. I don't want any trouble. Do you know what I mean? Um, but... Mentally, if he's got it, I want to see that. I, I don't want to see like him just coming towards the octagon, looking like he's going to walk the dog. And when he's in there, just his whole attitude of Dustin beforehand was, this ain't going to be a war. It's going to be smooth for me. It's going to be easy. In there, strolling towards him, not giving him any respect. I don't mind a fight I lose in. Every fight I will lose at some point. And it's about like giving your all. And I, I felt like his whole game plan was disrespectful to Dustin, probably thinking about the Pacquiao fight, and he just needs to take him mm. as seriously as he deserves, because Dustin Poirier is as good as it gets, really. Nick made some points just before the break there about, obviously, what goes wrong, you've kind of got to address it, haven't you? You've got to face it. And I think Connor's absolutely brilliant at un, like, accepting a defeat, understanding what's gone wrong in that moment, but it's a big thing now, when you're getting out of bed with your silk pyjamas on, to be able to go and address those things. From what you've seen, and as Darren said earlier, Instagram's not the, re the real world, but from what you've seen, are you a little bit surprised that maybe he didn't go back to Ireland for, for training camp, or are you happy with what he's been getting up to? It's, it's hard to judge what he's doing, that's the problem. I, I, think, I think what we do know is that he definitely still wants to be doing it because mm. he's got nothing to gain from being here now aside from those wins on his record and the accolades and the respect. So he's got to make that respect that he's going to get worth the hard work. Because before, when he was back in the day, you know, working towards his UFC contract, it was about putting the work in because he had something he was chasing. But the question, what, you know, what is he chasing here? Now, I think the, the good comparison is obviously Nate Diaz. You know, he lost the first Nate Diaz fight. He came in looking electric in the second one. Still struggled in the, in the later rounds, but came in focused and looked electric. He had a win over Poirier, and I think that did him a disservice because he literally looked like he came in just to do the same job again and move on to the next thing. And I think Poirier has now got, got his respect. He's got his attention. And in this trilogy match, Connor knows it's all on the line because, as you said earlier, you know, he can't be two losses down to, to the guy, especially a guy that's not the champion in the division, you know? He needs to be moving his way back to the title, and there's no title being, being changing hands in this but fight. Surely being in Dubai for a training camp doesn't fill any of us with massive confidence, does it? <laughs> no, really? like it's, no, it's, no, no, no. It isn't, no, though, no, is it? Right. When, when I've seen him on social and in Dubai, I'm like, bro, like, what are you playing at? Like, this is what got you in this situation in the first place around in Portugal, it's not, it doesn't fill the fans with confidence because we've seen when Conor gets these bright ideas and McGregor fast and all of that, I mean, it does, it, I want to see him in Ireland where his roots are and where he trains hard. Yeah, and he's the boss, isn't he? We, I done, I done a little bit of my fight camp in Dubai before I fought Gaslam, but I had co me coach Colin there, so yeah. it wasn't like I was swanning around, sipping pie. You didn't even see the sunshine. No. Exactly. Yeah. If What's it was, up? it was getting knocked out my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, by all means, you can train whatever you want, but who, who's your boss? Like, am I, like, do I walk around going, I'm Darren Till and I'm the boss of my life? No, I walk around going, I'm Darren Till and I'm probably the boss of my kids, but <laughs> apart from that, Colin's the boss of everything else. And I think, I think every fighter needs that. Yeah. That's, I think a, that's another point, Darren, about his, uh, he had his kids there. He was daddy daycare and all of this yeah. all over the UFC embedded. And I'm like, I tell you what, I'm not allowed to go into all sorts of competitions and they don't want to be a family man on that day. They want to yeah, be right. thinking business. Yeah. 
You're 100% right. So to go, we were, we were there, weren't we? And um, um, listen. There's interview, we rocked in with the kids. And that's fantastic. And it's great to see. It's great to see that side of him. But as Brian was just saying there, as you're preparing for war, you're preparing for a battle on a Saturday, to go from dad mode to beast mode is a very, very difficult switch to flick in the period of, what, two, three days? But he didn't. I, th I think you can <laughs> flick. I think you can flick it, though. Because people laugh at the kid. But the, the point is, is... He's just, it's like the whole camp and then even fight, it's just been like, yeah. kids, swan and ma, you know what I mean? It's not been like, it's not been like in the gym evilness and then like see his kids for an hour. It's been like, his kids have been everywhere with him. So in, it's like. In comparison on that, I mean, we were there on, on the day when this happened. It was Poirier's birthday while he were out there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, okay, his wife came out to support him, but his daughter wasn't there. He, 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 he had absolutely, all his family was away from him as he was preparing for that fight. Throughout Conor's career, I think of the big wins, the most incredible wins he's had, the Aldos, the yeah, the Alvarez, all that kind of stuff. They come to his world and they're suddenly intimidated by his world because Conor's this, Conor's the biggest thing the sport's ever seen. More media, more press, more fans, the biggest fight of their careers, the biggest paydays of their careers, and it's intimidating. And that's what happened to Dustin first time around. It blew him away. He said afterwards, wow, didn't expect anything like that. On Fight Island, it was an even playing field. Conor made it an even playing field. Oh, he's a family man like me. I'm going to donate to his foundation. And that was lovely to see. Like, oh, Conor's matured. Finally, he's grew up. But in growing up and maturing, he's become a pussycat inside the octagon. He can't be that again. This time around, this fight week, I want the full mink coat out again. <laughs> I want to see the dancing. I want the billy walk. I want the full swag, the full show. Because I believe he needs to do that to become notorious. Conor McGregor lost on Fight Island. Notorious has to take But you're not Las getting Vegas. that, because he's already said, I ain't doing press. He's already shutting down interviews. But, but what I mean is, he will do some, He will do that. a media day, yeah. uh, maybe with the fans, I mean, and he will have to do a, a ceremonial weigh-in where they will let 8,000 fans in. connor has got to return to Notorious, yeah. play up to it, and remind Dustin, hey, mate, this is not an even playing field. I'm the A-side, I'm the superstar. You're in my world now. And I think that is the, where he gets, he wins the first round then. That's what he's done so much in his career. And plus, it looked really weird if he doesn't wear his mink coat and Nick's in the background doing the dancing and wearing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean, you've, exactly. got, you've got to get him to raise his game to match yours now, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it is an interesting point, though, that, that you bring up there, Nick, regarding fighters that get themselves into the realm of like a, an alter, alter ego. Yeah. And that's what Connor, for a long period of time, has done with this notorious character that he's created. The talk, he's brilliant on the microphone, but last time out on Fight Island. Listen, I liked it. It was nice to see that side of him. Of course it was. He, he, was, he was very respectful towards Dustin. They were blooming heck. They were swapping products, weren't they? One hot sauce and a whiskey drink was going around at the, at the, at the Wayne's and what have you. Not a fair trade. It's, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not, no. With the amount of money that that Dustin never got, got his donation. <laughs> That's very true. Well, see, that changes things, though, doesn't it? Like, that brings a, a, an, an, an element of, of animosity between these two guys, which was absent in the last one. Mm -hmm. And I think, and there are some fighters that do, like Cowboy, like, you did it, you nailed it perfectly. Because when you faced off, off him at, at the stage, you were up in his face, and there was no connection there at all. Whereas when you see him on stage with Yancey Medeiros and their best friends and they've got their arms around one another, that's Cowboy comfortable and ready, ready for yeah. a sparring match. But, the but, pressure that Connor brings is what, uh, what impacts his opponents mm -hmm. and what Dustin felt in the first, uh, first fight. And as you were saying, he's not doing much media. It's the media that gives him his, his access to the fans. Yeah. If you're hearing a new tweet, a new comment, a new soundbite every day from him because he's doing loads of media, that trickle starts to get inside his opponent's heads. And that's been absent this time I around. I think I disagree well. a bit, though, with what you're saying. I think if he's done everything he needs to do in the gym and he's been in that evil mindset, he doesn't even need to come and do all the minks and whatever. I think it's, it's the surroundings in the gym. If, if he's been surrounded by violence and been doing all his rounds and everything, that, that type of man will have to turn up. Like, to the fight, so he can't, win a, he can't win a fight just coming in doing with his minks no, coat, no. I don't think. No. But you can get inside an opponent's head. That's of the course, he's not getting in Dustin's head, though, because Dustin's just knocked this him out. This time around, no, you're right, this time around, it's a completely different Dustin Poirier, you know, and, and I think Dustin himself even said, if he'd have been Crazy Connor on fight line, and that was ready for Crazy Connor, when he turned up and he wasn't, it threw me off a bit, but I was like, okay. But there's but a reason, This time he's it? ready for Crazy but Connor. Why, why did he not do it? It's the lack of insecurity. The same reason his training probably wasn't up to scratch, which we're seeing evidence of, is the same reason he didn't feel like he had to be, is because he thought, 
what I am now, even though I'm a happy family man, is good enough to beat you, Dustin. Mm. And he was wrong. And that insecurity is what I'm worried about as a fan of his because we're seeing Floyd Mayweather maintain his dominance over the years because he's such an insecure person. That's why he's covered in jewelry. That's why he wants everyone to know how rich he is. It's because he doesn't feel really worth a lot inside. But Connor is happy. He's content. And that if we, if we don't see that he can still dig through that, I, I think the same thing might happen again. Wow, you've just hurt me. I feel like it's a therapy session now. I'm okay. yeah, <laughs> I was, I'm going to put my gold chain away. Nah, One sec, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I charge 50 quid an hour, Darren. It's a good, good point. Price, it's a good price. Yeah. It's a good point. I do worry that he's just like Mr. Happy and Content now because that ain't a fight in my head. Like, we've seen, like, I know Rocky wasn't real, but there was real lessons in that, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But then look, like, look at the way in for the Diaz fight, right? It's the first time ever kind of stepped upon the stage and rubbed his belly on the, on the scale. <laughs> Normally he does that, ah, yeah. scream, you get that Two real breakfast. feral look in Two his breakfast. face. Yeah, exactly, it's like you get that real like, angry feral look on his face that looks like he's left his family and marched to the battlefield yeah. himself carrying his weapons. He arrived well, on the last way time in, around. He was literally different. pointing to his kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Total difference, Completely. Yeah. total difference. Well, the point you made is a, a, a brilliant point, but then that brings us back to the start of the conversation. Why is he here then? If he's content and he's happy, he's got money in the bank that his grandchildren never have to worry about money, and he's got all kinds of business interests, he's opening bars now and everything else, why is he back? He's back for one reason, not for money, not even for the belt, because he's won it before. He's back for legacy. He's back to prove that he's one of the greatest of all time. That's what's got me intrigued about this fight. Because can Connor 3.0 turn up on like in Las Vegas? If he can, Jesus. But, but, then, but then even if he loses this fight, people are still going to say that about him because Connor brought so many eyes to the sport of mixed martial arts. He feels like he's already, like, I think he's a bit comfortable. I think he's achieved so much already. Whereas Dustin, always feels like a, like a top 10 contender. Like yeah. he's always trying to fight his way to the belt. He comes through the trenches to get to the, yeah. to the arena. He's That's still, the difference. He's the number one in the world without yeah. the belt, but he's still, he'll walk into this fight, Dustin, as the underdog, like yeah. he does his entire career, and he revels in that. He revels in it. I think we're, obviously we're talking a lot about Connor here, but you've got to put some emphasis on Dustin as well. He's made the right decision to take Connor now. Don't let him go and get a win against Nate Diaz or whatever it may be. Get his rhythm back going. Get him now, cash that check, and then take, take the belt at the end of the year. Just a quick one before we obviously talk about the nuances of this fight. Just on Dustin, how impressed have you been with his development since the first defeat in 2014? Yeah, it's a long time ago and it's a different weight category, but how impressed have you been with his journey to this point right now? I, I'm just, I'm impressed with him every time out. You know, I mean, I've just, I've sat recently and watched his whole back catalogue. And you go back to his WEC fights, he was the same guy. He was the same fighter, he's squaring yeah. his stance, he's raging forward, it's throwing power that, punch, it? it's brilliant to watch. Yeah, yeah. But what's nice is his coaches have taken that and have gone, well, that's the quality that we like in him, that's the thing that makes him dangerous to these guys. Let's just bolster that with a bit of head movement and some uppercuts and some knees like he used against Gaethje, and of course the Darce choke, which he bolts on the end when people are yeah. under pressure. Like, that's the thing, you know, he comes through the trenches to get to the arena, but he also sometimes goes through the trenches in the first two rounds, and he's still there in the third, fourth, and fifth, ready to war. He's talking about that now. He's yeah. already, we're, you know, more than a week, a week out, and he's already talking about, I want this to be in the trenches. I want to go <laughs> two, three, four, five rounds. Yeah. I want it to be that fight. It's I truly believe he thinks he can break Connor. It's funny, because we're talking about which Connor shows up, because we all know which Dustin yes. shows up. Exactly and that's like the advantage Dustin has is, Guaranteed violence. We know he's coming in like Dustin Poirier, Diamond. There's no variation. Yeah, exactly. Every single time it's violence. So it's it's on Connor whether whether this goes long or not. Really. Mm. Yeah. Listen, uh, stick with us here on BT Sport because Dan Hardy's comeback is about to happen, and it's happening against Darren Till. <laughs> Exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> the Poirier McGregor three. The debate continues next. They're gonna spa. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Poirier versus McGregor 3, the debate on BT Sport. Hopefully, somebody is recording the outtakes during the ad breaks because some of the conversations that are going on in this octagon will certainly need to go on the internet. We'll stick them on Brian's channel <laughs> and therefore they'll go boom all over the world. Uh, now then, boys, um, I want to talk about the, the technical elements now coming into this trilogy and I'm going to use you two if that's all right. Are you, are you all right for that? that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, we, can, we can all have a little bit of a tickle here now. I think, it's, <sighs> I think it's only fair that we try and talk from a technical point of view. We talked about the emotional connection to this. 
I know that you've done a big breakdown of which is available on BT Sport, of which people can get their hands on, and you've gone to town on that. But just talk to me about, firstly, matching up as Southpaws, these boys. You come at it from Dustin Poirier's point of view yep. as the winner, the victor coming into this fight. If you would like to mimic uh, Conor McGregor's stance for me with your big left hand, if that's all right with you, my man. <laughs> is, that you is that all you're saying? I've got a left no, hand. I, no, no, I'm talking about... Another dig, another dig at that. <laughs> mimic, <laughs> mimic Conor McGregor <laughs> is what I said. <laughs> right? Give him a left hand. Yeah, I'll taste it, I'll taste it. Right, go on, talk us, talk us through. If you're, if you're Dustin now, yep. what are you, in, in, the, in the first embers of this fight now, what are you looking for? What are you looking to do in order to... to start dictating the dance? Well, first of all, I want to figure out what he's going to do. From the last fight, I'm expecting him to throw that overhand left. So I'm going to be real careful throwing my jab because he's coming over the top to crack me on the side of the chin. That's my first thought. But if Connor comes out like he normally does, where he's moving around and he's springing and stuff, Poirier's just going to give him a bit of space. But then he's going to start working on that lead calf. He's going to keep chopping that like he did the last so one. So just on that, for people watching this at home, yeah. for, we, we mentioned at the start of the show, in the second fight, he was very boxing heavy, was Connor, yeah. right? So therefore, he was quite flat on his Real feet. Real heavy on that lead There leg. you go. OK, so you're, as Dustin Poirier, entering this octagon, you're thinking, right, first of all, I'm looking at his feet. What's he doing? Is he going to be similar to the second fight, or are we going first fight where he's in that karate stance and he's a bit more bouncy? Exactly. If, if he's a bit, bit spaced out and he's got a bit more movement to his stance... He's then a bit he's Darren Till. A bit more Darren Till. Then you don't so know what's going to happen. So you're natural now, aren't you? Got to the top five of the left hand. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, if, if Connor comes in and just focuses, just comes in on a boxing stance and starts looking for that jab counter, you know, Poirier knows exactly what he's going to do. Yeah. So if Connor comes out throwing a whole bunch of stuff, it will slow the pace of the fight down for Poirier. But he don't mind that. Championship rounds is, is, is all about it. So for Poirier, it, it's, it's about covering distance when, when the fight starts to slow down. He uses a Ketchel shift for that, you know, Stanley Ketchel, yeah, the old yeah. 1930s. And he will throw the big shot over the top, expecting to miss, following through so he can land the next one. And that's, that's the way that Poirier is going to be able to push McGregor back, if he's able to. Because he, do, he doesn't want to be trying to play McGregor's game. He doesn't want to be trying to throw all those long kicks. But he also doesn't want to be walking into range and throwing that lazy jab because that left hand's coming over the shoulder. Other way around then, switch it. You're Conor McGregor now. Talk me. If I'm Conor McGregor, I'm going to go back to what I did in the first fight. I'm going to be nice and light and loose on my toes and I'm going to be throwing lots of high kicks and spinning kicks to try and force him back up against the fence. Yeah. But then I'm going back to that second fight against Nate Diaz. I'm doing the same thing. I'm attacking that calf because if I want to counter this left hand, I want you to step heavy on that lead foot. So if it's damaged already, as you step forward on that, you're going to commit and I'm going to be able to catch you with that. And if you watch the Nate Diaz fight, once that leg started to go and Nate's coming in and he's stepping heavy, he can't retract this foot quick enough to get away from that left hand. So the, the, the disabling of that lead leg for Conor McGregor is going to make Poirier a much easier target to catch with his counters. Regarding the defence of the lead leg as well, because last time around, it seemed like he wasn't going full way around with, it, with, it, with his chest. Just explain that, especially when it's southpaw versus southpaw. Well, the, the, <clears throat> well, this is the thing. I mean, this is not a problem Conor's had before because normally he's in opposite stances. Yeah. So the stinging to the lead leg is not nearly as dangerous. Whereas if you've got guys in, in a closed stance, southpaw v southpaw, orthodox v orthodox, the calf kick I'm aiming at is the tibial nerve right in that point there. And, and you really can't defend it without really fully turning full your shin. leg out for a full shin kick. You, you, you've got to catch it on the shin. What McGregor was doing was trying to jam it, which is still taking a lot of that force into the calf. My solution for McGregor would be to give him a discouragement. Every time that calf kick comes in, just barrel him down the center with the left hand and knock him off balance. Give him a, de a deterrent. And there's one other thing that McGregor uses really well as well. And that's that sop, hop side kick to the body and to the midsection, which works southpaw or orthodox. It doesn't make a difference. Still got it, even in jeans, pal. <sighs> a bit tighter. <laughs> <laughs> Still light, isn't it? The featherweight knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> If anybody wants to give us a call, we'll take, we'll take calls and we'll, we'll try and make, make a fight for you, yeah? Why not, why not? As, as, as we were watching through that, the, the technicalities there, I think you said this right at the start, Brian. You, you want to see Conor McGregor reverting back to old school Conor McGregor, where the guy that fought Dustin Poirier at 145 pounds. Do you believe, though, in your heart of hearts that we can see that guy? Does he still have it? Well, there were moments, weren't there? You know, there were times where he was really hitting Dustin and landing and hurting him. But what I was really impressed with Dustin's ability to take those shots and mm. actually outside of 145, how Connor hasn't been dropping people the same way that he used to. And I think we all remember those days and it's kind of, that, that was a different person at a different way at a different time. And Dustin probably will have gained a lot of confidence, the fact that he took so many of those shots and kept coming. So I think 
Con has to plan for the long game here. He, he can't just go in and think, I'm going to take him out. It's, it's got to be Diaz too. It's got to be, you know, he's landing his own leg kicks. He's giving him, and maybe give him some things to worry about that are, are unexpected. Maybe grapple, uh, try and take him down. I know that might sound crazy, but Connor is just so predictable in that last fight that I think that was his biggest undoing. Mm. It is mixed martial arts. I know that they've been going back and forth on social media. I won't repeat what they've been calling each other. If someone shoots and what have you, Conor McGregor just wants a stand-up fight, but it is MMA. And therefore, the, the more rounded fighter, you would think, is going to be victorious in this fight at 264. Yeah, listen, this, this is as good as the sport gets, isn't it? They're both absolutely well-rounded. They're both good everywhere. They're both strong everywhere. It's about who handles the moments. You know, and Conor traditionally has always handled the moments better than anybody else. You know, there's been no one that can, that can really live with him until this moment when suddenly it's, he's not the same Conor McGregor. Can he be a different Conor McGregor? Can he, can he live in that moment once again? Because Dustin can absolutely live in that moment. Dustin's ready. You know, as, as Brian was saying earlier, we know what Dustin's turned up. We know exactly what we're going to get. That's what's so fascinating. Can Conor come back again? Can he do it for the third time and go on a third title campaign again? I think throwing feints as well, like, uh, it set it up. Like, he was just walking forward, expecting it to just happen at any moment. It's basic. Like, I, I can't believe I'm saying this about him. Do you know what I mean? But he, he just fought, like, like, no respect for him at all. Does it just purely come from a lack of focus on that particular fight? Because we've talked about it throughout the show. He was on his way to fight Manny Pacquiao. So therefore, he was concentrating quite a lot on his boxing stuff. Was it just purely for you a lack of focus as to why he wasn't as sharp as he as he once was? I, I don't think so. I just think it was a it just think it was a, a misapplication of technique. I think he came in the first thirty seconds and he was like, last time I closed him down, I caught him with that left hand over the top, and he went down. I'll do the same thing now because I'm a bigger fighter and I don't think he can take my my power. And and there's a there's a time for Poirier, about ninety seconds in the fight where he's he's just a little bit tense. You know, if you look back to times when he's been stung in the first round, it's always been within that 90 seconds. And I think Connor started fast to kind of prey on that. But then if you look at the, la the first fight, he still got him done fast, but he didn't open up with that, I'm going to hit you with this left hand. You know, whenever he's doing all those spinning kicks and everything, people know what, what he's doing. Like, they're not worried about the kicks, they're getting out of the way of them. It's the left hand that comes behind it. Mm. But if, if he's not giving them all those looks, they only focus on that left hand. And, and I, I do think Poirier does take a much better shot at 155, but I would also say, I don't think he took a good shot from McGregor in that second fight. What about allowing Dustin to be the aggressor and actually counter-punching him? Because that's where you'll find your openings, in my opinion. Like, he basically showed his hand so quickly to Dustin, and that's where the check right hook was landing every time. If, if he lets Dustin go first, as he did with Aldo, He's got a better chance to and, and hold the energy back and go, right, I'm not going to blow my load so quick this time. It might work for him. Mm. See, I think if he was backing up and countering when he was still fresh, he's got a better chance of landing those shots. And, you know, the, the, the Aldo, uh, the, you know, Aldo was a perfect example because he baited him to get him to move onto the shot, you know? Yeah, Same yeah, thing yeah. with Nate, the times he hurt Which him. Which he practised in the changing rooms, though, the footage. Yeah. So yeah, it yeah. goes back to, I know I might keep saying it, the gutters. Yeah. So has he practised them shots a million times in the gym? Yeah. Has he done a 10, ten fours on pads? Has he done 10 fours of sparring? If he hasn't done any of that, the instinct is not there. You know that famous saying by Bruce Lee, is it not practice 10,000 kicks, practice yeah. 10,000 of the same, you know, exactly. kick, I don't know the quote Wanting exactly. 10,000 times. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, has he been in the gutter doing all that instinct, fainting, as his coach had him, fainting, 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 hit, fainting, going back to the gutters? It, it's so, it's so yeah. not just the yeah. physical aspect of that as well, isn't it? It's, the, it's how mentally taxing that is within a fight. You experienced that with Robert Whittaker. Into, yeah, it have, me and Whittaker were just stood there for one round just doing that. <laughs> and after he Who's going me, first? Yeah, he's going first. Well, <laughs> are you got go on? And I'll go, ah, <laughs> you nearly got me. It is big on the brain when you're in the, in the zone of fight, that five minutes. I had loads of flight me when me and Wonderboy fought. It was the same thing, taxing, because I, I knew one step forward into his range of motion, he's going to hit me. So I knew I have to come in, see what he's going to do, and go, right, I know he's going to do that next. And that's how you figure, I mean, and my, this might sound intricate now, but that's how you figure fights out. Yeah, and exactly. Just, and we've seen none of that at no, all. We've just Connor. seen, well, he was in his face. I'm going to hit you. There you go. You know what I mean? Like, I, a lot of people say, oh, Till, you know, he's built, he's only got the left hand, but it's what comes behind with oh. it, a feint, something like that. And Connor is probably better than me at doing it, but he didn't do it. He just come and... Plodded. Through. Yeah. But you can't do that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. has he been doing this gutter work, as I keep going on about, for, for 10, 12 weeks? 
10 fours of pads, 10 fours of sparring, running. I mean, I, I don't buy into all the McGregor fast, as you said myself. I think it's, I don't think it works for fighting. But even when he was at a peak of his powers, even when he was super fit, super hungry, you know, maybe a featherweight or when he first moved up to lightweight, just the style of throwing that big left hand, there's only 10 or 12 of them in his arsenal before his energy levels are going to drop. You know, there's only a certain amount of them. And right now, he probably hasn't, well, in the last fight in, in fight, he certainly didn't have 12 of them. He probably had six. And when you miss with six, and then the seventh kind of lands on your shoulder and you're dusting pie and you go, that doesn't feel like the first six. That's, the energy level's dropped already. And that comes back to Connor. Has he put the work in? Is he working? Has he got the cardio in the tank? Has he got 12 big left hands in him? Yeah, and, and that's why he gassed against Diaz in the first fight. Not because he wasn't landing, because he wasn't landing clean. Yeah. You know what Diaz is like. He's got such a long stance. He's like fighting one of those uh, floor standing punch bags. You hit it in the top and it just goes. <laughs> I'm coming back. And then comes straight back <laughs> out. You know? But he was like cuffing him off his shoulder, off the side of his head. Nothing was landing clean. Yeah. He does better when people are moving towards him. He did the same thing with Nate and with Poirier in the first fight. There's a clip in the breakdown show, I talk about it, because he lands a clean shot in that first fight that most people would have missed watching the regular version of the fight. Mm. But if you see it from above, you see him jamming with this left hand as he's coming in. And people committing themselves forward is often when, he, when his counters do better work. Mm. Um, right, boys, we've gone through, we've obviously seen you two have a nice little fight, which I enjoyed. Was I um, yeah, it was good. Close good <laughs> cool, and personal, eh? I like it. So uh, I'm good next. at me fainty, I'm good. <laughs> uh, we've got one more part left, and make sure you stick with us because we're going to be making some big predictions. We're going to be putting our heads on the chopping block. Welcome back to Poirier versus McGregor 3, the debate here on BT Sport Final Part. This is where we make our predictions for the men event at UFC 264. Ryan, I'm going to start with you. Sorry for putting you on the spot early doors, mate. Here we go. Let's get stuck in. Listen, <laughs> listen you're good at this, man. I've, I've seen your stuff. I know that you will have a, a, a solid opinion on how you believe that the final... I say final part, you never know if it's a cracker. We might get a fourth one, but I'd say the final part in this trilogy and how it plays out. So what are you thinking? I'm, I'm talking if, if a gun to me head here type situation. Go for it, man. Um, if I could guarantee it was 10 out of 10 best Connor, it would be Connor. Uh, but I think he reminds me a bit of like Nassim at the end right now. And, he, you know, he's just not training hard, partying a lot. You know, a great showman, very similar. But um, with Dustin, I just know what I'm going to get. And he's seven and one since Connor last beat Eddie Alvarez. And to me, that was... Connor's last good performance where I can actually say stakes were high because I don't even, the Cerrone one for me wasn't something I can actually put a lot of stock into. And, you know, Connor's uh, one and two in that time. So um, I just don't have a lot of faith in Connor to turn up on point. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably go with Dustin. How are you, doing, how, how are you going with him? Are you going with him over the distance? A finish. Uh, I, I think a finish because Dustin's going to gain in confidence from that last one. And also... All right, the Mayweather thing, it wasn't really a finish, kind of like in, a, in the sense of a UFC style finish, but he got finished, you know, Diaz finished him the first time, and then since then, Khabib finished him, you know, Dustin finished him. And I don't, I don't have any problems with fighters getting fin uh, losing fights, but when you're getting finished, it's a classic sign of a fighter in decline if you look back through boxing, yeah, yeah. MMA, all you're of right, it. Man. And that just doesn't give me a lot of faith, because fighters who really want this, They'll gut it out and, and to save face and go to a decision and lose a decision. But when you're getting finished as regularly as Connor is, it just doesn't give me a lot of faith in him. Okay. Different opinion or not? No, I agree to a certain extent. I just... It's, it's hard. It, with fights it's like hard. this, uh, Brian touched upon this right, right at the start, it's hard not to have the romance of it because, he, because Connor, for a long period of time, yeah, all right, at 145, Give us so many amazing moments, so many amazing moments. And if you're a Conor McGregor fan, which a lot, all of us are, as we are Dustin Poirier fans, but you remember those romantic moments, don't you? So it's hard sometimes to detach brain from heart of where we're at right now in the reality. I'd love to see Conor do like, who the guys I'm taking inspiration from at the moment, do like a Charles Olivier moment or a Brandon Moreno or Jan Blachowicz, the way they've just been like beat down to the ground. How many losses have they had and now they're all three of them are champions. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to see Connor do that, but it just depends whether he's, does he want to do that? If they've had to do that with nothing behind them, they haven't achieved as much as he has in such a short time because I know a lot of people say, oh, he's, 
since the Eddie Alvarez fight, but he's gone on to do massive, massive and bigger things. Like he fought Mayweather, he's brought out a big, massive whiskey. I know that's got nothing to do with it, but he, it's like he just keeps doing bigger things, but he still comes back to fighting. So this is, this is, the, this is the highest earning athlete on the Forbes list over the last 12 months. That's where we're at with Conor McGregor right now. And he hasn't earned, what, half of that has come from, like you've just said, his commercial opportunities mm. outside of the octagon. So you, are, you, are you agreeing yeah, with Jordi here? You're going with a, think, a Dustin Poirier finish? I think, the way, I think the way Poirier trains and fights and he's getting better with age, I think Poirier's going to finish him. All right, are you ready for this now? Here's some controversy. Go. I can't believe you two. I can't believe you honestly. Next time we do a debate show, get these two on. Get some more fanboys on. Get him back to fight. I'm now. Get him back to fight. I am purely to be the McGregor fanboy. I've Wait, ruined you, you it. We, we're rescinding your membership. Sorry, buddy. Get him you back to there. fight disciples. He doesn't belong here. Exactly. <laughs> hey, notorious. <laughs> you better believe he's back. Listen, I'm in the Conor McGregor business. I'm, I'm ain't, ain't, ain't gonna lie. He's gonna be back. He's gonna be better than ever. I'm in the he's Conor gonna McGregor shock business. the world once again. He's gonna knock Dustin Poirier out in the first round. And once more, we are all gonna be on the Conor McGregor Do you McGregor know why he's doing that? Train. He got a lovely little retweet off Connor this week, didn't you? That's what it is. You're social media friends now, aren't you? That's what it is, see? Darren tweets my stuff as well, so that's why we're best mates as well, so. Round? When you go in, are you going First in? round. I think he's got 10 minutes. We're talking a pride round here. connor has got 10 minutes to end the fight. I think any from, once we hear the, the bell for the start of round three, I think it's all dust and I think we know that. I think we all know that. I think we've got a 10 minute pride round. We've got two rounds here where Conor McGregor can land that left hand. He won't rush in like last time. He has got respect for Conor. He will feed off a capacity crowd inside the T-Mobile. Get the coat back on. Get Sinead up in the gods with a microphone. Let's go all in. Smoke machines, the full nine yards. Connor's back. You wait and see. You've just gone viral, mate. You've gone round Connor's the world. Connor's back. You've gone... No, it wasn't that. It was the notorious dance. That's what, it was. That's what was going around the world. Come on, big man. Okay. The brain. Talk me through it. How does this play out? Okay. M my calculation for this fight, 70, 80% wise, I'm leaning towards Poirier. Basically, if they fought 10 times, I think Poirier wins seven or eight of them because I think he's got the staying power and the toughness. I think he knows what to expect from Conor McGregor, and I think he can stay away from that left hand most of the time to the point where McGregor gets through his first 10 minutes and he starts to get tired, and then Poirier comes on. I think McGregor's going to win. Though. <laughs> Unreal. Yes, Dan! <laughs> yes! What? Wow. And, and I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why. Because generally... Technically speaking, McGregor is a better martial artist. He's, he's definitely a better striker, if not a better all-round martial artist. Okay. And there are, the holes in Poirier's game are there regardless of who he's fighting. If he's got someone that connect with him clean in the, in the early rounds, and I think it's probably going to be a first-round stoppage, I think Poirier is just as susceptible as everybody else to Conor's left hand. And I don't necessarily agree that he's not got, a, got the same kind of power. Because if you think Nate took Leon's best shots in that fourth round, and Connor dropped him a whole bunch of times in their rematch. Mm -hmm. I think connor has got the natural power. I think he's naturally the faster fighter. And I think if he comes in with his intelligence, his intellect and his calculations, and he plays the game better, I think he's a smarter fighter as well. But what he doesn't have is that, that blunt force trauma just to march through, that the Greek hoplite shield wall just walks you into the fence and mauls you. That's what Poirier can do but he's got to get through so much firepower in the what process. What about being knocked out, Dan? Because this is the first time he's been asleep. Um, that's a big deal. But See, will that affect him psychologically, where he's now a bit more gun-shy because he's like, I got put out last time? See, I, I don't think it will, for two reasons. One, I think that the, 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 the feedback coming out of the dressing room after the fight is that the main thing that was concerning him was the leg. He had a lot of pain in that leg. And I think that diminished his conditioning as well as his output way before we actually started to respect the fact that leg was damaged. Second of all, when we see Connor getting backed up against the fence, we already know the fight's done. Like, we already know it's slipping away from him at this point. And the punch that Poirier landed on him, if you watch that footwork, McGregor slides along the fence and he goes, Poof! that's a free full power shot. If I'm throwing a medicine ball at a wall, I'm doing that little skip with the feet. And I think Poirier can generate the power to hurt McGregor. But I, I just think if you watch it, McGregor was square, he got caught on the forehead and he went down and his eyes were still open at the end of the fight. So I think he got hurt for sure, but I still think fatigue and the leg kicks played into the finish. We, we've never seen anyone counter McGregor the way Poirier did. That, that would be my counterpoint is from the first go, Poirier was checking with the right hook immediately. He knew what to look for. And 
one thing I think about Poirier is he's going to come with something different. I think McGregor's going to be anticipating the leg kicks and Poirier's going to switch the game plan up and it'll be something else that he comes with because he knows he can't just do the same thing that tricks out the bag now, so he's got to come with something else. So it wouldn't be surprising to me if we see something totally different from do, him. Do any of you see this going the distance? No. No. No way. No. no. Just me, then. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a draw, then, you think? No, I've just, I've just got a feeling that it will be a lot more calculated. Just, just as I look at the history of fights, when you've got two guys coming into a fight, and I know that the circumstances are very different in this one, when you've got two guys coming into a fight that have got a knockout each of each other, you're a bit, you're a bit tentative. You're, it's like what you were saying before about who's going first. If one is going to go first, then, yeah, I agree with you. All. Some, there's going to be a stoppage somewhere. But if, if neither goes first, it might be just a high-level chess battle for 25 minutes it, it might until Poirier gets bored and then he just starts moving forward <laughs> then and he, he could he potentially walk into a he lot could of stuff then. walk into stuff yeah like if McGregor might be this might do the smart thing by hanging back and forcing Poirier to come to him because he'll walk onto counters but I still think McGregor's finite he's got 10 minutes and you look at the Nate Diaz fight, yeah, that was five rounds, but the, you know, he spent half of it doing laps of the octagon and Diaz pointing at him and laughing. Like, Poirier won't Poirier let won't him off. Poirier won't do that, no, he won't do that. You know, if, if Poirier landed on Leon, he'd have jumped on him to try and get that finish in the last 30 seconds. He won't point at him and laugh. It's a different mentality. But, but Poirier would jump on him. That's the thing that makes me think, oh, it, it could be McGregor because even him as a rusty Connor, Landed some really good shots in that first round, oh, and like turn them down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Turn them. I'm, hey, so I'm he's, he's not sure. No, he's I'm, not sure. I'm thinking McGregor as well. Here's <laughs> the thing: no, if, if I was putting like, if this was a fun thing, fair enough, McGregor. But if someone put a gun to my head, I'd pick Poirier. Yeah. Because it's just like because he's consistent. He's so safe. Because yes. yeah. you know what you're gonna get. Yeah. I get that. It's yeah, guaranteed. Absolutely. Like I know if violence. I was, like if I was that, to bet money, yeah. Like now, yeah. I know Poirier's been in the gym, yeah. doing 10 fours of pads, 10 fours of sparring, running. I'm not betting on Connor with my money, I'm betting on Connor with his money. Yeah. <laughs> that Justin Gaethje fight from Poirier, yeah. the, war, the level the, of war he's prepared to go to, I don't believe Connor's prepared to go the same and the Dan Hooker place. Well. So yeah, I think Connor either gets it done early, if the first round ends and they're both still breathing, okay, Poirier's winning. That's it for me. McGregor's got, I'll give him, I wouldn't even give him 10 minutes because, to be honest, I think Poirier's just got too much for him later on. So if that plays out and Dustin wins, what for Conor McGregor? Is that it? Is that him done in the UFC, do you think? I would think so, yeah. That's big. I would think so, yeah. I, I think if he, if he loses, <coughs> he won't, but if, if he loses, <laughs> then I think in the UFC, we've got the celebrity style fights. We've got the BMF title fight with Masvidal. We've got a third fight with Nate Diaz. Both of them still sell. Connor's still Connor, and we are not boxing. L's are allowed in this sport. It's all part of the sport. I just think his time as a real genuine title contender is done. There's also another conversation with your My boy mates. as well. Man, I'm telling you, <laughs> Logan and Jake yeah. Paul come into the conversation because Connor's all about making money. Logan and he told can make me once the Connor money. fight, like that is, that's his goal, Conor McGregor. Conor and McGregor Jake. versus Logan Paul. Not happening. Come on, print its own money. He is wrapped up to the end of his lifetime in his contract. There's no way he's going anywhere other than the UFC. I think if Conor loses, we're going to get something like a Tony Ferguson fight. Yeah. And I won't be mad at that, mm. but we all Masvidal, would get to the stage. I wouldn't be mad at Masvidal. I wouldn't be mad about God. it, but I think Masvidal bingos him. I think he's, I think he's just a better fighter. You know, oh, bigger and better. A little bit of <laughs> Yeah, but I don't think Conor McGregor would beat you. So, you know what I mean? It's like, that's, that's the, it, like Masvidal's a smart fighter. You, know, you can't take that away from him. We keep Conor McGregor away from Masvidal. Like, yeah, that's no not a good chance. fight for him at all. That is not, not a good fight, fight for him. I don't think so. Yeah, Tony Ferguson, Diaz, I'd watch them, but is the, is the urge there when you're not the main attraction, when, when your star's shrinking, when your ego's as big as his is? I, I don't know if he'd want to carry on doing that. May, maybe the UFC might do like a, you know, because when you think of the amount of money they could make from a Logan or Jake Paul versus Conor McGregor, the UFC would take their nice big chunk the way they did Mayweather. He might be the one man who can convince Dana White to allow that. You reckon, yeah. Because uh -huh. the, the, I, I don't think it, the I money difference from Connor versus Masvid or any of them, mm -hmm. in fact, is huge. So I think Dana will persist with Connor as long as he can. But if he thinks, you know what it is, we'll just squeeze the juice out at the end here, let him go and do these celebrity fights, maybe he would. I know Connor, Connor deliberately has never shot that down. And he, he's, even as Jake Paul's called his wife, called everything about him, Connor's never, ever shot that fight down. Yeah. To me, 
He's just too much of a businessman. Come on, staring us all in the face, isn't it? Now listen, that's the negative side of it, but if he, if he wins, Charles Oliveira title fight next. Yeah, I want to see fight. the same story as Charles, and, and that, like I said, I love them stories, me. Yeah? So I would love to. Does, I, he, does he get a title shot straight away, though? Because he's yeah. not been on a good run. I mean, I know, obviously, brand-wise, he gets a title shot, but does he, you know, do we see him in there against the Gaethje or a Chandler first? Mate, nah, the UFC are doing an interim heavyweight title fight. Yes, he's getting the shot. He's get, <laughs> if he wins, he's getting the shot. If he fight Derek Lewis next, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. They're keeping him away from Gaethje, sure. Uh, yeah. I think most people still recognise Poirier as the number one, even though Charles won the belt. I think most people realise that Dustin was the number one ranked fighter when Habib walked away. He chose to fight McGregor, which opened up the vacant title fight elsewhere. So I think whoever wins this 100% steps into that fight if they want it. But suddenly, Connor's star will be back at the top of the tree again. So Connor will have options, and whether that includes Manny Pacquiao suddenly again, I know he's got a fight in boxing, or maybe even a Floyd Mayweather rematch. Nothing is off limits if Connor becomes top of the tree once more, because what he's proven throughout his entire career is, for the first time, he is an athlete that has transcended the letters UFC. Okay, so who will be reigning supreme at 155 pounds at the end of the year? If you remember, we started the year and the three of us yes, predicted did. Charles Oliveira would be champion at the end of 2021. We're not bad. We know what we're doing, Daz. But I'm going to flip that. <laughs> you're all, you're that. both riding on the back of Dan, bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I'm, actually, <laughs> I'm actually going to change my tune now because the winner of this fight fights Charles and the winner of this fight beats Charles as well. So I'm going to stick with Connor. I'm going to stick with Connor beating Dustin, then beating Charles Oliveira and ending the year as UFC oh, champion once again. Wow. Reign number Yank. three. Jeez. I hope you're right. Yeah, got? <laughs> I've got Charles because I know Charles is the lightweight champion and he trains himself. He trains in the gym on himself with his students. Yeah. He is going to be the lightweight champion by the end of the year. Okay, so nothing changes there from your nope. point of view. Oliveira. Still on the Oliveira trend. I just, I, I just yeah. think he's too technical for everybody at, at every range. I, I think you, you, know, you look at the next, next group of guys moving towards him, I just think he's too much at both ends of the spectrum. His striking's really good now compared to how it was you know, back in his featherweight yeah. days. And his ground game, is, I mean, he's the record holder for submissions. And the question's over his mentality as well. He came through I have no the questions. fire against the challenge. I have no challenge, questions about it at all. Yeah. I, just, I just think Charles Oliveira right now is the best lightweight in the world. And I don't think anybody right now can touch him. Come on, Brian. Give us something different. What have you got? I, I, I agree in the skill set. I think Charles is amazing. I think his defensive striking especially is really good. But I think Dustin would find a way to crack him and knock him out. I don't think his chin would hold up to, to what Dustin would put him through. I think Dustin will find a way to land it and he'll be the champ. Glad I love it. it. I Glad love it. it. I mean, I can sit on the fence all day. Listen, we're split down the middle here. I've gone, I've basically bottled it and said that it's going the distance <laughs> and you guys have gone two each on each side. I'm sure people at home have got their opinion as well as how this fight is going to play out. Listen, UFC 264 is set to be an absolute crack with that main event between Poirier and McGregor part three. That's been the debate. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, but don't forget to come back in and enjoy the fight itself. The prelims go down at 1 a.m. on BT Sport 2. Make sure you come and join us for that. And then on BT Sport box office from 3 a.m. is when you can get the main card. For information of how you purchase that main card, head to our website, bt.com slash sport box office.